In this video, we will be going over the installation of a SLED 150LX zipline kit. While this video will give you a quick overview of the process, be sure to read through the included installation and safety handbook before attempting. Start by opening the kit and laying out the components. To set up your first anchor, take the short length of cable with a loop on one end and thread it through one set of tree saver blocks. Wrap the cable around your anchor to determine where the second loop needs to be made on the cable sling. Use three U-bolt style cable clamps to create the end loop. Clamps should be oriented so that the U-bolt is against the dead or non-weight bearing portion of the cable. Wrap the completed cable sling back around the anchor and connect both end loops to the quick link and the quick link to the anchor tie-in point on the tri-link. Then attach the winch to the tri-link so that the tie-in point labeled main is in the upright position. Adjust the cable sling near to where the cable will be anchored permanently and spool out the entire length of cable. Feed the end of the cable through the second set of tree saver blocks. Pull the cable around the second anchor and position the tree saver blocks around the back side of the tree. Remove as much slack as possible by hand before terminating the loop using three U-bolt style cable clamps. Remember to orient the clamps with the U-bolts against the dead or non-weight-bearing cable and the saddles against the live or weight-bearing side.
coil any excess cable out of the way. Return to the first end of the zip line, repositioning the blocks if necessary, and begin adding tension with the winch. The winch has a switch that allows for operation in up, neutral, or down modes. Put the switch in the up position and crank the handle to add tension. Zipline cables need enough tension to keep riders off the ground, but should not be over tensioned. Please review your safety handbook for additional details. To achieve the minimum tension required, apply the weight of your heaviest rider and measure the cable height about three-fourths of the way down the zip line to ensure good clearance. When the cable has been tightened sufficiently, run the short cable from the tri-link over the main line and secure them together using four fist grip style cable clamps. You'll notice that the cables in both directions are weight bearing, hence the double saddle design of the cable clamps. When the cables are fully secured together, the winch can be switched into the down mode and cranked in the reverse direction until tension is completely released from the winch. The tri-link will pivot downward, with the load being held between the anchor and main tie-in points. The winch handle can then be secured using a short length of Velcro. The stop lock can be installed after the cable is up by bending open the rubber slot and pulling the inner channel down onto the cable. Make sure the stop lock is positioned at least 5 feet out from the lower anchor. To secure, insert the three U-bolts into the block against the cable and tighten down the six lock nuts on the back against the washer plate. The trolley can also be installed after the cable is up by securing the upper and lower halves of the trolley together around the cable using the included fasteners. Assemble the seat by passing the 1 inch rope through the disc and tying a figure 8 knot underneath. The seat can be adjusted to any point on the rope as long as you leave a few inches past the knot to prevent untying. Attach the seat to the trolley using the included steel carabiner and spin the locking mechanism into place. At this point, your zip line is fully assembled. Before allowing anyone to ride the zip line, be sure to complete the weight and speed testing outlined in your safety handbook. Thanks for watching.